And speaking of good friends, Dr. Joe Congeni, Akron Children's Hospital with us live in studio this morning. Good morning, Dr. Joe. Hi, Ray. How you doing this morning? Very good. Yeah, what, Great. Were you telling me, and we should do this, congratulations, your daughter's getting married this weekend? Saturday. We're excited. Very right down nice. Market Street here, St. Hillary's, mm-hmm. and then over to Portage Country Club the other way. So it's mm-hmm. uh, we're really looking forward to Is it. Is this going to be a big wedding? Oh, everything in our family is <laughs> big, Ray. You know that. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Okay. So, so let's talk a little bit. Clevenger gets to camp. Yeah meniscus surgery yeah. six to eight weeks i'm sending you down there to scout this out ray and, i'm gonna look and into you, it and you got to cut off any of this you know <laughs> testing our depth of the pitching staff mm. that's where our strength is mm-hmm. and we need guys like him but this is i do want to talk to you about a timing kind of thing with meniscus and a little about meniscus again i know we've talked about this and your audience knows well meniscal tears are really different in kids usually in kids in our clinic it's with an acl they're not a real common injury that meniscus is just so pliable and elastic it doesn't tear much in kids not as much not as frequently when you get into those 20 and 30 year old athletes they get you know the, you start to get a little bit of wear and tear around that cartilage pad in the knee and with twisting injuries they'll have tears they'll have have uh, unstable fragments that then they go to you know start spring training and all of a sudden they'll unmask an injury they had hey geez how did he not know in the off season but that's the kind of injury and then when we get into adulthood you're in my age it kind of wears out more you and i had the talk kind of like a pair of old jeans they fray instead of really a tear so there's three different stages if we see it in kids the one sport that we see it in a lot is wrestling with so much knee flexion catchers with knee flexion and stuff like that but with Clevenger, so so in this injury, I did want to ask you guys. Now, it, so the, being the time of the year, absolutely right. Get them taken care of now. You know, Tito saying he can do some throwing stuff even in four to six weeks, and in eight weeks he'll be back. You know, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> if this date was September fifteenth or October fifteenth, what would you do with Clevenger then? I mean, we don't have his MRI to know, but many times athletes try to play through these at real key times. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember two basketball players that come to mind who played at really key playoff times and probably gave up some of their future because they played through bad torn meniscus, at least what we read in the paper, played, swelling, catching, locking, kept trying to play, maybe even injections and stuff. And then later on, they never got back to the level they were at before. Willis Reed's a good one. Oh my gosh, going back a long way. Willis Reed tried to play. He, you know, he came out with one leg. He did. Oh my gosh, that's you and me as a kid. Me as a kid. Jim Jones, maybe not Jones. Jones had the broken foot. Two guys, a little more of the more recent era, and then they're just a shell of themselves when you see them play now. So Derrick Rose was so explosive, and with the Bulls in that one series, I think he tried back to back years to play. And he's just lost his explosiveness when you see yep. him play now. And Dwayne Wade, uh, there were a couple playoff runs where D. Wade played through and really ended up paying a price. And so, you know, I think Bynum did too, come to think of it. Andrew Bynum, I mm. think, played through a meniscus. So you'll see that at certain times of the year, people try to play through these things other times. Perfect time to get Clevenger healthy. That's a big part of our sending you down there is to figure out keeping that staff healthy. <laughs> the other part is I want to see how much of a backlash with this. Hey, there's finally some passion in baseball. What kind of backlash are we going to get on this cheating scandal? Well, it doesn't slow down. I mean, players are really outspoken. Uh, Rob Manfred, the commissioner, you know, he came down on the managers, the teams, but not the players. Right. Because it's kind of a pickle. You don't know. Can you suspend the whole team? I was saying earlier this morning, take the whole team and suspend them the first 40 games of the year. That gets the message across. <clears throat> or, just... or something I thought like two or three at a time, two or three for three weeks, two or three for three weeks, two or three more. for. Th- mm-hmm. I thought something like that. But I think a suspension is in order. And then if he goes ahead and suspends the guys who are throwing at the guys, then you're really the can of worms is really opened up. It, this is going to be really it interesting is. because we had Sheldon Oker on the show yesterday, yeah. Joe, who, as you know, I hold him in high regards mm-hmm. in baseball and such. He says this is worse than the steroids and maybe as bad as the Black Sox scandal I think that's because right. you had a whole team where with the Black Sox there was eight of them. This thing you had the whole team in. Yeah, yeah. 
You're right. So it's going to be interesting. It is bringing some passion to baseball, which is a sport that could kind of use that. But but from the standpoint of while you're down there, you might see some of these unmasking injuries of mm-hmm. people that came into camp. We don't need a lot of them this year. We're you know depth wise, we you know we're a little thinner. We we had to get rid of uh, Kluber and stuff like that. But Clevenger will be good. He'll be. I was bad. just going to ask you with this meniscus and yeah. this surgery. They six, say six to eight weeks, right. and I know you haven't looked at his x-rays right. and all That's that right. stuff, but if it's six to eight weeks and then the ramp-up time, I was thinking... Gosh, end of April, beginning of May is where yeah. we might see you it. know, I think that's a really good guess. I think Tito might say, and I, I've heard a couple of his conferences since, that he can do some pitching things even in a couple weeks, and so he doesn't think it'll be as long. But, again, April baseball, just not all that important from the standpoint of, I think even, you know, kind of the way we sat on Frankie at the beginning of last year, the weather isn't great. You're not really wanting to rush somebody out there. I think a really good uh Guess looking ahead guesstimate is probably late April, early May. And the one thing you've done a good job of educating us with is if you do rush back and you're compensating for a little pain, then it puts the stress on the other aspects of your body, whether it be your ankle, your hip, your shoulder, your arm. It puts stress in different areas. I do worry about this kid. He has that somewhat herky-jerky motion. He had that muscular injury that lasted a long time last year, two months. He's had a few injuries. But, man, when he's on, he really looks good. He looks like he could, doesn't he, Ray, could possibly have number one stuff almost. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And, and boy, could we use that right now as we try to kind of hold this together and make another run. Well, I'll give you a report next week. All right. I'm going to be listening closely, (laughs) and then I'll be seeing you in two weeks. You got it, my friend. Thanks, Ray. There you go. Dr. Joe Congeni, Akron Children's Hospital.